Nike Asus Polar got some exceptional heroes this game. Yeah. Loving yeah. this scrap. Though I'm not... The safe lane morph lane, one of those things where even if you can't kill him, you just make the next couple of minutes of laning very difficult. Ooh. Now he's low. Uh -oh. Mana. Uh -oh. He's got bottle charges here. But still Fada looking to dive him. Really committing for this one. May actually end up getting the kill. Huge dive from Fada. Where's that rotation from your Radiant Squad? Nobody's got a TP. He's got Axes soon. He gets the solo kill. Diving a Morphling who had just been strength morphing the whole while. Ouchie. Now bottom. Lil in danger. Misery looking to run him down. Big turn with the conversions. But no. The Undying gets him with a decay. And now they may hunt onto Sedoi who does have Firefly. But little mana to use it. Phoenix swoops in. Huge aggression, almost Russian Dota coming out from Cloud9. Not what you would expect from this team, and it does seem to be catching them off guard. Will they burn down Sedoi with oh. those damage over time? They get the kill. Cloud9, make it three for zero. Everybody just getting softling bat, the Enigma jungle, and you run like the dual lane safely, and then you can possibly keep them busy on the bottom lane. Speaking of busy, they are right now. They're diving G here. Healing Ward comes out nicely hidden in the tree line. Swooping around is your Phoenix. Still, that Healing Ward survives, but they're just going to ignore it. Keep on smacking him. They'll kill him through the full duration Healing Ward. Doesn't even matter. They get the job done. And, well, now putting their, their Juggernaut, I guess, the two position. They try to get a Blink Dagger underway. That could be their fallback plan because Ildin still needs a lot more time to work with on this Morphling. Here comes your smoke now. Moving around from the north is G and FNG. An early play by your Juggernaut. And they find Fada mid lane. No creep support. They are too far out of range. Omni Slash coming through. They make it a twofer here. Oh, they did drop the tombstone though. Dakota, this could quickly turn around. They need this misery kill. G, slow down the orb of Venom. The roar. They get it done. Buy back from Bone 7, I do believe. Or uh, rather from Fada yep. on the Beastmaster to turn that one around. But they end up getting two cores there. And an early, it feels like almost desperate at this point to try to get some kills underway. Bone 7 seems to be locked on their crosshairs. He doesn't have much mana to work with, and it looks like he's already on the way back towards that TP. They're Will they cutting be able him to off, off, though. Oh. They got the hex, no finger, but Black Hole should just be immediately committed here to secure this kill, and there you go. Don't reel him in. Can they bring him down? He's fairly tanky. He has five stick charges. Can drop the decay. No tombstone, oh though. Oh my god. If they don't get him, that would be not good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> not good when even begin to describe that. I, uh, that I'll dive harassment there onto Ilden. Looks like they just kind of want to give Big Daddy some time to continue to farm up if he wants to get that Midas. Oh, hello, but Big Daddy. okay, they turn back onto him. Replicate? replicate hit him once. Egg immediately. Ilden's like, I can try to muscle this one down. Can you get it? One more auto attack. Got it. Nicely done by Illidan. If he hesitates there and tries to run, then Big Daddy kind of baits him. Well, as they make the committed dive here, there's one rotation to come from Illidan, but it might be too late. It will be. FNG goes down. Illidan's here now, right into the tombstone, wants to push forward, knows that the egg is on cooldown, but now he's in trouble. Fata moves on forward. Illidan has nowhere to go. The beam comes out. Will they be able to evaporate the Morphling? They will. He goes he's so down. Slow. He's got the boar slowing him down, the orb of venom. The K stacks piling up, the beam just laying into him, and middle tower man, is under attack. Took, your boots of travel leaves you very squishy. Yeah. Here comes attack. Misery, though. Perfect position to set up. They're going to swoop in. Now the egg comes out. They can drop the zombie house and see you later. Asus, run the hell away. Roar was chucked out there. Get hit something besides it here. Oh, no, actually, they end up getting rolling. This could be good timing for Cloud9 if they're able to finish out this Roche. Misery will have Brain Sap available. Nice after Beastrip. though, Decay coming out. Bone 7 so tanky. They get the Aegis. They won't even be punished. Meanwhile, Misery setting up for a Fiend's Grip, but he's being monitoring. Now Sedoi going to kidnap and pull him into FNG. Down into the river he goes, but it's a Bane. If he can get off a of Brain Sap, he's got 11 stick charges. No. No hesitation there. They're going to blast him away with the Morphling. Still Illidan, not worth it if he goes down, and it looks like he will. The chase comes on. The apocalypse is upon Asus for now. Again, the Yule Scepter. Not enough to save Bone 7 this time around. And the dust settles. They do manage to walk away with the Aegis. Pick and touching base with Sedoi. He does have his Blink Dagger ready to go, but there's the Fiend's Grip. It will connect, and look at that. Boots of Travel. There's the reason he got the ruby red shoes right there, LD. He could just go show up at a moment's notice right on top of that bird. Provided from Fata, and they get that quick and easy kill right there. And now that is going to be a Necro book picked up here from Fata. More points in stats. Level two. Eternal Energy. So it seems like the idea is that his main contribution is TPing in and just using his combo once. He's not trying to fight like in a prolonged engagement. He just goes in for these quick picks, which he 
They find now on Illidan top lane just getting massacred by the Illusions okay. Bone 7. This is ridiculous. It's like a swarm of zombies and illusions. <laughs> this is gross. That Orb of Venom just feels like the, the icing on the cake, the early value item. Oh, can they get the kill on Bone 7? He's got Decay. I think he can turn this. He will. EE strikes again. They're running over Asus Polar in this game. Oh, mid lane, Primal Roar. They want G next, and he's been drained of all mana. He's got nowhere to go, and it's a double kill as Eternal Envy gets worked on top and mid. Back on top we go, though. Misery gets the quick sleep on his Sedoi, but they want to commit and get him. Lasso's going to grab. It's Oh, the Firefly ends. What a terrible oh. time for it to end. Four heroes die all around the map, and it really feels like Cloud9, and especially this... Eternal Envy Peel are just everywhere. We see the power of the early boots of travel coming into play. Maybe not the best item if you're playing from a deficit, but certainly from an advantage. This seems to be disgustingly good pickup, General. So if they need to, they may just relax, forfeit some objectives, be more selective in their fights, and, and wait for better opportunities. But bottom lane, Fada again. The man looking to set up plays as, hello, it's me, Eternal Envy. And uh, one lance, down you go. They force out they're, three TPs. setting Does up good plays. Oh, they get a good jump back, though. They grab EE, pull him back with the blink and lasso from Sedoi as the follow up there. They get the stun. FNG very weak and wounded and no finger. He's got to get the hell out of there. He's got the Aegis, though. He's able to just fan on oh. right by. Gets the kill. Walks away. He's going to stick up. Don't tell me EE dodges out of this one. Okay. They got Omni Slash for round two. I don't know if they can really focus him down. Tombstone's here. The whole gang's arrived. Suddenly, five heroes bottom as Asus. Forced to turn tail and run. Envy on the chase. More lances ready to go. Illidan being he healed up by the Helium Ward, but raised down by that vicious Sunray of Big Daddy. You just can't run from C9. You either stand and fight or you die. This lineup is too good at chasing. They just put together this ridiculous army, this war path almost, wherever they go. And it's just proven to be quite the tirade here. And it's just Polar don't really have an answer to stop them. I'm making out the call that they need to just kind of accept the fact that they're going to lose towers and they could farm up into the late game, but they're losing towers and they're losing lives. Ildens were brought down time and time again. He's 3-5 and five on his Morphling. Not and he had a really good start mid, too. Yeah. Ocean. Both fallen. games now, and it has been thriving. I just, I love the, the diversity in draft. We've seen them yes. running a fairly similar strat a lot of the recent games with that, that Magnus Jug type draft. With the the, the kind of the late game oriented ancient clearing type style, but well, another fight breaks out bottom. Tombstone probably ready to go here. It is, and they're gonna hunt Illidan already. Your Batrider lasso countered. He by just an easy Yule Scepter. The Tombstone comes down. Fight's gonna be over here for Asus. They gotta turn tail and run, but No Tail is trying to cut that tail right off. Hunting Illidan up onto the high ground will be blasted away, but guess who's been left totally on his own? Blue is Omni Slash. Got the Beastmaster, but gonna pay with his life. It's G. Run down. They're just getting herded like cattle, and soon they'll be brought to the slaughterhouse and finished off. I mean, just one spirit lance and then the tombstone, and next thing you know, you got this army on your ass. Look at this, and the sunbeam. This, what do you do? You can't do anything. It's like every 30 seconds, Cloud9 can just use another round of abilities and collect a kill. And there's just no way to punish them right now. They have just built up too much power for themselves, and Polar Mildin secures that one. One kill. Uh, well, it feels like forever, but... 1,500 gold. Very, very big kill for the whole squad. Yes. Here they are now. Still trying to take their first tower of the game. There's a lot of gold out there on the map for them to take if they can get to it. But I imagine with Cloud9 and how aggressive they Illidan play. Illidan going to tank a grip. Here he just oh ran God. into this one. Flame Break comes in. Will cancel that grip. Kept alive, but the egg gets dropped. Forcing three heroes back. Lances being spammed in. EE e surging forward. Zombies on the hunt. They're not done yet. He's going to BOT onto a zombie. It gets canceled. Just a cute mechanic there to try and go for it. But he may just get this kill anyway. Phantom Ranch, Rush comes in. The laser Illidan back towards the oh, well. Omni gets one. That will be a decent trade again for Asus Polar. These fights going a little bit better for them now. That's a two for two overall. Still that last bit of the skirmish. Cloud9 out over towards his own jungle. Now they look to make the move. They got a four step on the Batrider. This is a good time to take a fight, but Big Daddy may be able to turn it with a Supernova. He's not going to drop it. Just hit Omni Slash coming out. Now the egg deployed, but 
Well, I guess he saves himself. Not able to save his buddy. With the four staff, it's a very slow one, but this is an item that can turn games. We've seen it many a time mid lane. Paladin out of mana. Almost finished off by Thought of they could go in for a black hole. They've got a soul ring at the ready, but again, it's the Phoenix chasing in the black hole too late. Big Daddy maybe goes down, but already has secured the Morphling kill now. They bring down the lion. The hunt is on Lil. Surrounded, pounded, and brought down again. A wicked sick Eternal Envy arrives. Yeah, they just, the second that something's breaking out in the mid lane, they beeline it there to get involved. And they come in a good time to be able to clean up from the backside, removing out FNG, taking those backliners out of the mix. And now they could just follow through, pushing now pressure onto the top high ground. Necro 3 out. This tier 3 tower looks to be going down here. Ilden has 20 seconds, does have buyback, but does not want to be forced to use it quite yet. So I don't know if they could stop him. They do have the glyph. They might be able to keep him away, but pressure on this melee Rax. Sadoi, six seconds for a lasso. Could look to set something up here. I think it looks like Cloud9 are going to take the Polar. Now they got this to deal with here. Looks like it's going to be secured Roche. FNG trying to take this time to farm up the top lane. I thought he'd be going for the Blink Dagger, but it looks like a Staff is the choice. Potential Yules or Force Staff underway here. But now towards the mid lane, they already boot to travel in. Blink forward. They get the Primal Roar on the Ild, and they look to try to finish him off on the back line. They do not have Black Hole. They need more time, but they're not going to get it. Enigma goes down, Illidan to follow. A quick two-man drop there for C9. It felt like just a second ago they were in the Roche pit. Now they get two kills in the mid lane. No tier three, Dyer's there is a glyph. Buyback's not attack. available on either hero. With this, I mind G2A close in on a 2-0 advantage. It's a best of five. If they win this game, Ace Luke's Polar are gonna be a match point the rest of the way. Not a position you want to be in. They'll brain down the melee, gonna work on the range. That too shall fall, and they just rotate right into the top lane. I don't really see much life left in this Radiant squad, Dakota. They're trying their best. They are split pushing the top and the bottom, but that doesn't help a lot if they're, their home base is just being shredded They're not apart. even hitting tier three towers yet. That, this is just not going to be a trait that they're satisfied with. And in, in a matter of moments here, we may even just see a GG out. And from this point with the Boots of Travel PL, if they had to, they could just rat it. But I don't think they're at that point. They're at the point where they could just fight and win. Spot up will roar. FNG, where you go? Nowhere fast. He yelled in his face. Hey! Don't go anywhere! <laughs> the illusion. Yes. That up. Even without the Diffusal Blade or... Just a casual Spirit Lance and then he's gonna probably lose half his mana Yeah, it'll pool. have to be KP just to deal with that. And we'll see it here, probably. There it is. And Yildin, they grip. Well, the grip. so much for the BKP. And... See you later. Elden goes down godlike. For Eternal Envy here. Sadoi now gonna get back into a corner and just manhandled. Double kill for him. I feel like the white flag might have to be raised here in a moment for Polar. And they do have one more chance after this game. It is a best of five. But Cloud9 have a lot of momentum built up behind them at this point. They find another quick snag. They take down Lil in the top lane. It just does not continue to get any easier here for them. They've made a great run in the Summit 3, but they end up falling just one series short. Right now, Cloud9, they've got one lane of racks to finish off. Radiant's if they can barrel down and just bust attack. up this bottom lane, there's nothing left in the Asus base. And they're a good late game lineup. I don't think they're that good. There's no Dusa with a rapier here to turtle for 90 minutes. <laughs> FNG slated to fall. And then they even find G here. He wants to set up on the Fada top lane, but has the, the creeps with him. And even if you kill the Beastmaster, guess who's hitting your huts? Taking down effigies soon. Oh, the effigies. No, please. Mercy. No mercy right now. Okay. That's what they want. G, maybe you can get a snipe here on the Fata. Look at it coming from behind. Has a new Scotty showing it off right here. Bang, boom, bong. I'm going to get you. Zombie's going to rotate. There is no roar available. Yeah. Buyback is up. They will make their way onto Illidan. He does not BKB just yet. He's going to need to soon. Already the black hole. There you go. Maybe this can turn around. Aids is still up. Oh. On Eternal Envy, though, he's got a round two to work with. Oh, and they've God. committed heavily for this one. Omni Slash thrown out the black hole as well. And... Can they get him the second time around? They wanted the lasso, but Eternal Envy able to just fan him, dodge away from that. And now throwing out lances on the Illidan, out of mana, out of options, walking back to the well. He ain't gonna make it. Bone Seven to smack him down. The chase going towards the well now. Summer Soul also finished off, and Asus Polar get blasted out of game two, putting Cloud9 G2A on match point the rest of the series. 44 to 12, your ending score. Who would have thought that we would see? Dominance from Cloud9 in Game 1 and now Game 2.
they just seem to kind of be putting together a good formula and they just execute it the way they want and there doesn't seem to be a hiccup along the way Polar got to be scratching their heads at this point on what we need to do to pull this series back because it's going to be match point now for Cloud9. All right. Well, with that said, this is a best of five series, guys. It's now a 2-2.